SpaceX is rapidly pushing into the next phase of the Starship program. Block 3 vehicles are moving toward launch readiness. Pad 2 is nearing full operational capability, and Pad 1 is undergoing fast-paced demolition and reconstruction. At the same time, we're getting new details on the next-generation Raptor 4 engine directly from Elon Musk. Let's break down everything underway. The first Block 3 Starship, Ship 39, is coming together quickly inside Mega Bay 2. Its liquid oxygen tank has been mated with the stacked upper sections this past week, and once the downcomer, aft dome, and flaps are installed, the primary structure of the ship will be complete. Teams will then begin internal outfitting, routing hydraulic, pneumatical, electrical, and avionic systems ahead of cryogenic proof testing. Meanwhile, Booster 18 continues assembly in Mega Bay 1. Both its oxygen and methane tanks are finished and will soon be joined to form the first Block 3 booster. At the current pace, the booster is expected to complete cryogenic proofing first, followed by the ship, before moving into static fire campaigns. If timelines hold, testing could begin late this year or early next, opening a launch window between January and February. Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's Vice President of Launch, spoke at the Economist Space Summit 2025 in Orlando on Wednesday morning and confirmed that the company is targeting Flight 12 as early as January. He added that a booster will roll out to the pad for testing within days to weeks, which strongly suggests Booster 18 is about to head to Pad 2 for cryogenic proofing. If this pace holds, both the ship and booster could finish testing by the end of December, opening a realistic launch window in January, exactly as Donchev indicated. The timeline is incredibly tight, but hearing it directly from SpaceX's VP of launch implies that internal milestones are on track and the teams are actively pushing to meet the schedule, marking the first launch of the Block 3 vehicle. Block 3 introduces major structural and performance upgrades informed by earlier flights. I've covered those changes in detail in previous videos. Check the links in the description for a deeper dive. SpaceX's next-generation engine lineup is also entering a major transition. Raptor 3, the engine that will debut on Block 3 starting with Flight 12, is already deep into hot-fire testing at McGregor. The engine is lighter, more efficient, produces higher thrust, and has a much cleaner layout now that most plumbing, wiring, and electronics are integrated inside the engine instead of running externally. Raptor 3 is the first variant truly optimized for rapid reuse and high-volume manufacturing. The next in line is Raptor 4, and to understand the significance of this version, we will have to go back to 2019. At the time, Musk openly admitted he wasn't sure a full-flow stage combustion methane engine could ever beat the Falcon 9's Merlin, a gas generator engine that was brutally simple, lightweight, and extremely cheap. Merlin dominated the two metrics Musk valued most, thrust-to-weight ratio and cost per ton of thrust. And like most stage combustion engines, early Raptor designs struggled to compete in those categories, making Musk's skepticism understandable. Fast forward to today. After years of rapid iteration, redesigns, test stand failures, and lessons from every Starship flight, Musk now says Raptor 3 not only matches Merlin, it surpasses it. According to him, Raptor 3 is expected to be two to four times better than Merlin in cost per ton of thrust and will exceed Merlin's thrust-to-weight ratio, a complete reversal of his concerns in 2019. Raptor 4 aims to push the numbers dramatically further. Musk says this next-gen engine is being designed for more than a tenfold improvement in cost per ton of thrust over Merlin, with additional gains in thrust-to-weight ratio and specific impulse. Also, at full power, Raptor 3 is already pushing around 280 tons of thrust, or roughly 2.75 meganewtons. But Musk has said that future versions like of Raptor 3 or Raptor 4 are expected to push that full 300-ton level of thrust, or 2.94 meganewtons, at liftoff. Once the engine family hits that level, Starship's booster would produce nearly 10,000 metric tons of total thrust at liftoff about 22.5 million pounds of force, roughly three times the peak thrust of Saturn V. Put simply, Raptor 3 is the engine that finally overcomes every limitation Musk once worried about. And Raptor 4 is the version that turns those gains into raw power, higher efficiency, and a truly low-cost engine architecture at a scale Starship has never seen before. While the next-generation vehicles and engines advance, ground infrastructure at Starbase is also undergoing major upgrades. Pad 1 is being dismantled and rebuilt to support the Block 3 fleet. Teams have begun cutting the launch mount section by section. The top launch mount ring is now the main focus, with crews actively cutting it apart and removing its shielding panels in segments. 
The main propellant delivery lines running along the launch mount beneath the ring have been cut and removed, and the booster quick disconnect mechanism is also being taken apart in parallel. Once the outer shields are gone, crews will start removing internal hardware, including pipework, electrical systems, valves, the hold-down clamps, and the 20 booster quick disconnect mechanisms that interface with the outer engine ring of the booster. Once the mount ring is cleared, crews will move on to the support legs and then to the water-cooled steel plates beneath the pad, along with the feed pipes that supply the deluge system. The deluge network itself will also be upgraded with higher capacity pumps and additional storage tanks to support the enhanced flame trench setup planned for pad one. In parallel to the launch mount disassembly, the launch tower is also undergoing a major overhaul. The massive hoist winch cable system that raises and lowers the chopstick arms was fully unreaved about two weeks ago. No surprise given the years of mechanical fatigue accumulated during lift and catch operations. Recently, crews removed the protective top cover of the hoist assembly to access the components needed for installing a new replacement cable. It's still unclear whether SpaceX will replace only the cable or also swap out the main hoist drum. A complete upgrade to a higher grade drawwork system remains possible to ensure smoother, safer operation for the heavier Block 3 vehicles, improving lifting stability and catch response speed. SpaceX is also preparing to shorten the chopstick arms to match Pad 2's design. Shorter arms simplify lift and stack control, reduce mechanical loads, and allow faster turnarounds between launches. They also lower bending moments and oscillations during mid-air catches, improving rigidity and long-term structural life. Engineers have already removed key arm systems, the hydraulic shock absorbers for booster landings, the centering screw mechanisms that guide the vehicle on the rails, and the ship lifting pins used during hoisting. All will be replaced with upgraded Block 3 compatible hardware. New welded lifting lugs have been added as crane anchor points, confirming that trimming work is imminent. Ground systems around Pad 1 are also being stripped and reconfigured. The berm wall separating the tank farm from the launch area is now being demolished and will be replaced with a reinforced blast wall. Crews are removing outdated pumps, heat exchangers, propellant lines, and auxiliary hardware from the tank farm ahead of system upgrades. Several new pumps and heat exchangers have already been installed near the propellant tanks, and additional replacements may follow, depending on whether these are dedicated to Pad 2 or intended to support both launch pads. Only the large cryogenic storage tanks are expected to remain in place. Once demolition is complete, SpaceX will rebuild Pad 1 to mirror Pad 2's modern layout, meeting the safety and performance standards required for rapid high-frequency Block 3 operations. While Pad 1 is being torn down, Pad 2 is approaching operational readiness. Last week, teams performed retraction and extension tests of the dual booster quick disconnect mechanism to validate the newly installed propellant transfer hoses, confirm proper alignment, verify actuator stroke accuracy, and ensure reliable performance before final BQD panel installation. With all cryogenic, hydraulic, and electrical systems now installed, teams have completed all gantry shield panels, including the large panel that closes the equipment access bay used throughout construction to move hardware and personnel into the gantry. The propellant delivery lines from the tank farm to the launch mount have also been fully purged, confirming system cleanliness, proper flow, and readiness for cryogenic loading. The flame trench deluge system has undergone multiple rounds of testing since September, successfully validating system pressure, flow distribution, and operational flexibility. Attention has now shifted to the top deck deluge array, which completed purge tests this week to verify valve function, line integrity, and sensor response ahead of full flow testing. The final phase will involve simultaneous activation of both the flame diverter and launch mount deluge systems, simulating full liftoff conditions. The last major component awaiting installation is the ship quick disconnect arm, now in final assembly at the Sanchez site. Mounting hinges and attachment hardware are already being prepared on the tower. Once installed, Pad 2 will be fully outfitted and ready to support the upcoming Block 3 launch campaign, beginning with Flight 12. At the Kennedy Space Center, construction of the nearly identical Starship launch pad at LC-39A is accelerating. The orbital launch mount was rolled out to Pad 39A on Tuesday morning after being pre-fitted with several key components. In addition to the internal electrical and plumbing systems and other core hardware, similar to the pre-installation work done for Starbase Pad 2, 
engineers also completed a few extra pre-installations this time. The most notable additions include the lower protective hood for the booster quick disconnect mechanism and all four water delivery manifolds that feed the top deck water discharge plates of the OLM. The entire OLM assembly is expected to be lifted onto its support legs around the flame trench in the coming days. Once secured, teams will move on to the remaining integration tasks, including installing the booster hold-down clamps, the quick disconnect mechanisms, additional plumbing, and the propellant delivery lines that will complete the system. Meanwhile, the ship QD arm for LC-39A, now nearing completion at Roberts Road, will also be installed on the tower soon. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. On November 2nd, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket thundered off the pad at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the Bandwagon 4 rideshare mission, the fourth flight in SpaceX's program dedicated to deploying small satellites into mid-inclination low-Earth orbits of roughly 45 degrees. The mission delivered 18 spacecraft, with deployments beginning about 12 minutes after liftoff and wrapping up roughly 75 minutes later. Its primary payload was VAST's 500-kilogram Haven Demo, a technology demonstration satellite built to validate key systems for the company's first commercial space station, Haven 1. Founded in 2021 and based in Long Beach, California, VAST plans to launch Haven 1 no earlier than May 2026 aboard a Falcon 9. The module stands 10.1 meters tall, 4.4 meters wide, and provides 80 cubic meters of pressurized volume, 45 cubic meters of which is habitable for up to four astronauts. With a launch mass of 14,600 kilograms, Haven 1 will operate in a 425 kilometers, 51.6 degree orbit, powered by 13.2 kilowatts of deployable solar arrays and protected by a micrometeoroid orbital debris shield. Astronauts will travel to the station aboard Crew Dragon for missions of up to 30 days, with SpaceX providing full crew training, suit operations, ingress and egress procedures, and complete mission simulations. The module includes dedicated microgravity research facilities with experiment racks, sensor packages, and payload interfaces designed to support scientific work alongside crew operations. Its internal systems center on life support and environmental control hardware that regulates oxygen supply removes trace contaminants, manages thermal loads through cold plates, and continuously monitors cabin conditions. High bandwidth communications and onboard Wi-Fi come through integrated SpaceX Starlink terminals. Additional amenities include private crew quarters, exercise equipment, a deployable table, a 1.1 meter domed viewing window, and dedicated tanks for wet waste storage. The Haven demo launched on Bandwagon 4 will test its communication links, power system, propulsion, flight computers, and guidance navigation control algorithms over the next six months. It will relay performance data to ground teams before deorbiting or passivating, supplying engineering feedback essential to Haven 1's final integration. Looking ahead, VAST is already planning Haven 2, a larger multi-module station targeted for launch in 2028 on a Falcon Heavy, expanding the volume, docking capability, and mission flexibility introduced by Haven 1. Alongside Haven Demo, the Bandwagon 4 mission also deployed 17 secondary payloads supporting Earth observation, reconnaissance, metrology, and communications for customers across the United States, South Korea, the UAE, Czech Republic, Argentina, and more. For the full list and detailed descriptions of all the payloads, please check the links included in the description below. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.